All right. Woo! Welcome, welcome, welcome to Gavin Jam episode 148. And what was that? That was a little bit of Stanley Clark School Days. A little bit of Stanley Clark School Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, uh, this is episode 148, and this episode uh, talks about the six costs of being an artist. Everyone talks about all the great stuff that can be gained from being an artist, you know, hitting it big, being famous, being rich, being known, touching lives and all that. What about the cost? Everything costs. Nothing is free. And we're going to talk about the six possible costs. Of course, the list probably goes on, but we stopped at six. Okay. Start. All right. So the cost can include, but it are not limited to number one. As artists, most of us, well, and I'm just speaking for us, I think we are introverts, a lot of us. And putting your your soul into your art and then sharing it with the world, you are putting yourself out there for criticism. But I mean, that's that. It, I guess you're lucky if you actually get criticized because that means somebody's actually listening and taking the time right. to, to respond. But that is just, that's like, you yeah. know, that's pretty vulnerable. It's, it's vulnerable all the way. I mean, it's one way or the other. If you put out something, nobody buys it. <laughs> I mean, you know, again, that that's that's criticism to some people. Yeah, you know, yeah, if they don't care about it. It's apathy. Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. you know, I think apathy is almost worse, worse than hatred sometimes because, oh, yeah. you know, at least there's an emotion to it. So that's the fact that you're actually putting something out in the universe and you're expecting some type of... Um, you know, feedback, you yeah. know, um, you know, hopefully positive feedback, hopefully people want it, hopefully people want to buy the record or yeah. whatever else. But just, you know, just that aspect of it, you know, um, there's, there's always that possibility that, you know, people may say, you know, they hate it, it sucks or whatever <laughs> else or that. Eh. It's just stressful sharing right. it out. Yeah. It's easy to make it. I mean, it's fun making it and we enjoy making it, right. but then it is the presenting it and continually presenting it, whether you give feedback or not, because right. again, you know, we, we talked about that with the social media episode that just because you put it out doesn't mean your 3000 friends, fans, followers, even saw the post. So right. it yeah. may not even be their fault they didn't respond. They right. might not even have seen it. So right. Yeah, you know, or, or, or this could be not that cup to you, whatever. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it just all kind of goes, it's, it's rejection. Yeah. You know, and I'm saying that to, to some extent, rejection is always hard to take. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, I mean, as an artist, anytime you're going to put your work out there, there's a substantial possibility that you're gonna get rejected. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's not that doesn't feel too good. You're right? probably gonna get more rejection than you do acceptance. Yeah. So, or definitely love. Yeah. All right. Another cost associated with being an artist is that if you are a new artist, um, people expect that you're gonna sign a deal that is not gonna be favorable to you because just like we said, nothing is free. If somebody's gonna invest a yeah. lot of money in you, yeah. so I mean that's kind of a bummer though. Because you're new, you're bright, you're, you know, ready to take on the world, and you're excited when somebody is interested in you. Right. But the fact that you know they're probably kicking you in the nuts is probably not fun to think about. But well, it, it all depends on how you look at that. And, okay. and again, I, I know a lot of people say that. It, it only becomes a bad deal when you make money. Right. And, yeah. and I'm saying that if you think about it from the record industry, the way that they look at it is that, there's a 90% chance that this deal that they, they've made with you is not going to make any money. Yeah, that's true. And, and the, the good thing for you is that if it doesn't make any money, then you don't owe them anything. Yeah, that's so, true. So then they true. have invested, you know, I don't know, thousands of thousands yeah, of dollars yeah, in yes. you, and you can't get that from a bank. Yeah, You can't get true. that from any place. Yeah, and, that's and, true. And they put this money in you, and then it just sucks, and it just doesn't do anything. I'm not going to say it sucks. It doesn't say it. It doesn't do well. It doesn't do well. Yes. Right? So they drop you. Right. You know, so, yeah, you may have lost the rights to those songs. Right. But now you can write a whole new set of songs, a whole new set of people. Yeah. Go on, do something else, do a deal on your own, do whatever. Yeah, and they might actually know who you are because right. you had this major label. All right. Or at least possibly. you can now tell people, hey, yeah, I, you know, I was with this major label, yeah. I was with blah, 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 whatever else. So a lot of times we always see these things when it's down the road. Yeah. And, you know, the record company has made this deal with these 
artists because of the fact that down the road they want to have this huge payday. Yeah, that's you know that, that that's why they made this deal. <laughs> you know, and sometimes too, it's not just a record label that's involved. So like, if you take a TLC. There, there was like the managers that are involved. Oh, yeah. There's a production company that's yeah. involved, and then there's a record company. Then there's a producer that's involved. Yeah. So it's like it, it, the the more hands that you have in your cake, yeah. and, and it's the same thing. You, you got this big Family. birthday cake, yeah. you know, and now all of a sudden you got to share this birthday cake with twenty people. Yeah. And the piece that you get of that cake is not gonna be as much right. as it would be had you not have to share it equally. Right. And I'm not even saying equally. <laughs> with those people. All right. But then again, you know, you may look at it, yeah, but I was the artist, but you didn't write the songs. Yeah. You didn't produce the songs. Yeah. You didn't put up the money for the studio. All right. You didn't put up the money for your demos. You didn't, I mean, oh, you, didn't, you didn't buy even, the clothes that you got on. Even start. You didn't put the money for the videos. Mm -hmm. you didn't, come on now. Right. I mean, yeah. look, I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I know, anyway, first little problem. problem. No, you can't. Right, you can't. Right, yeah. right. Again, that you have to kind of look at the entire deal, right? right. Yeah. Um, so another possible cause, and those are all costs yeah. that you know down the line makes yeah. you know that yeah. does. And, and then you you might not, and, and then you just hate it because your friends think you're making a lot of money, yeah. but they don't understand. They understand the music part of it. They don't understand the business part yeah, of it. Yeah, they don't. And based on the business part of it, you're not making that much money. Right. Because right. all these other people got to get paid back before you see a dime. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. All right. The third possible cost to being an artist is that even if you do have a quote-unquote hit, you may end up chasing your tail. We've talked about this before that right. if your fans, followers, whatever, expect, or your producer, your manager, record company, if you've done a certain thing that was successful the first time, and I'm, I'll go back to the Purple Rain instance, how do you follow that up? Are you trying to chase that and do Purple Rain Part 2? Yeah. Or do Orange Rain now? Or, or do you do what Prince did and just say, screw it all? Let's go to, but let's not even think about somebody that's on the pinnacle. Let's not look at Prince when he was at the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. Let's let's go to Prince when he had a number one R&B hit. Come on, I want to be a lover. I want to be a lover. Uh -huh. Second album. His first album flopped. Yeah. Okay, so second album, well, let me just say today, your first album flop, you're not getting a second album. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's, <laughs> this, this is old time. Yeah, old school. Right? Is really old school. But let's just say you had that hit like he had with I Want to Be a Lover. Mm -hmm. And for Prince, him taking that complete left turn yeah. that he took to do Dirty Mind. Oh, yeah was pivotal yeah. and really set the stage for him yeah. to do Purple Rain. Yeah, that's true. You know, later on, right? Um, I don't know if in today's record business, you could just pivot an like artist that. could pivot like that. Yeah. You know what a, I mean? A, and because he wasn't at the stature where you, where you would accept that from him. Because again, again, record companies are about completely right now. Yeah. They're not about artist development. Yeah, they don't do that well. anymore. Yeah. They're about making money off the artists that they have. Mm -hmm. And so to the extent that you walk into a record company and the reason why they signed you mm -hmm. is because you gave them, let's just say, Old Town Road. Yeah. And now you come back in giving them <laughs> not, oh yeah, not, uh, smells like teen spirit. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't care. Right. They, they're not going to want that from you. Yeah. And they won't accept that from you. Exactly. They're, they're going to expect more of the same. Yeah. And so, in this industry. So you might, that might be the cost is yeah. that you are not able to express the, how you feel you should, whatever it is you have on your heart. You got to chase the charts. I mean, yeah. we were talking about that with Beyonce. This is why Beyonce has to get mad to stay out yeah. on her record. Yeah. This is why anybody would have to go and find the. The Cardi B's got to get Mad the Stallion on the yeah. record. Why is that? Because Mad the Stallion <laughs> the is what is happening, up, right. right? You know what I mean? You've got to attach your wagon to what is moving forward. Yeah. You know, you cannot be back that's in the past. Really you can't be yesterday. Yeah. You know, but that's the way that yeah. today's pop industry is. Yeah, you know, true. and and so you have to understand it. You have to recognize that. You have to get the best producers. You yeah. got to get the best songwriters, best team of songwriters, yeah. whatever's going on at that time. You got to align yourself with those people who can assure you're going to get that next hit record. Yeah. You know, because nowadays that's what it's about. It's about the hit. Yeah. It's what have you done for me lately. <laughs> right. Period. All, the, all these years later. Yeah, what, what have you, you done, done for me lately? lately? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> all right. Um, another possible cost, and we've been talking about this one a lot, uh, 
of being an artist is that if you are either too political or not aligned with whatever the current political stance is of your particular fans or yeah. management, that can be detrimental. It can be. Um, Hank Williams Jr. Uh, he, oh, yeah. Are you ready for some football? football? You know no, that? No, you ain't ready for no football. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because of the fact that he spoke out of, about Obama. Yeah. And it was like, you won't be doing that no yeah. more. So, I mean, again, you're, where you coming from politically, yeah. it could have consequences. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that artists should not do that. Right. But again, as we're, we're talking about now, yeah. everything has a cost. Yes. You know, you speak up politically, it can have a cost. It's the same thing with the NBA. The NBA yeah. is very vocal. Yeah. Very vocal. And so, from what I've been hearing, their ratings have been tanking. Oh, wow. Why is that? Because liberals and conservatives like basketball. Yeah. But they don't like the same political message. They know, they so, to the extent that you're mm. throwing that political message in their face, yeah. they're going to tune out. Yeah. It's their right to tune yeah, out. It is. They, yeah. they can do that. That's what consumers can do. And right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what consumers can do. They vote with their dollars. And, and, mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, again, that's the same thing with Muhammad Ali. He said, hey, yeah. I'm not going to war, blah, blah, blah. Three years of his career, yeah. gone. Yeah, because true. of that. You yeah. know, he had to fight in court to get the right to get his license back yeah. and all the rest of this yeah. kind of stuff. And then went all the way to the Supreme Court. They made a whole movie yeah. about just that aspect of Muhammad Ali fighting mm -hmm. to get back his career. Yeah. So I'm saying a political stance comes with a cost. Yeah. Colin Kaepernick, he's not yeah. back in the NFL. Yeah. He won't probably never be back in the NFL again. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, this is the, these are his best years for playing football. It does. It's but kind of it, like he can wait 10 years and start doing it. So. It comes with a, a cost. cost. Yeah. I mean, it, but that's, that's what happens. You know, uh, we lose our leaders because of that. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. You know, he stood for a lot. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. came with the ultimate cost for him. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and again, I'm not, definitely, I'm not putting any of these people <laughs> on the same level as Martin Luther King. Please don't All think right. that that's what I'm doing. I am Just not doing that. Give me some examples. No, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to say, you might lose some money. Yeah. Because you're talking in a way that some of your audience don't like. Right. Or that some of, like you say, some of your sponsors. Right. Um, another possible cost, and we have talked about this over the years, and it has uh, many folds, is that you're trying to live a personal life amongst notoriety or, yeah, so or amongst creating. So, I mean, you open yourself up for not only gold diggers, but... If you're raising children, it's not so much about you, but maybe you want to protect your kids. Right. Also, what if your message is not kid friendly? How do you handle that with? And maybe your message changes. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, yeah. it's like sometimes your message may need to change. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think our message has changed. There's certain songs that I wrote when I was 19. I can't sing to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just <laughs> I can't sing them. Yeah, you know I, I mean? just felt a little weird once I became a mom. Some of the stuff that we did, and I still listen to it. But I wasn't comfortable. I never played it for the kids. Now, they might have heard it, you know, since they are right. older. But when they were little, I was not going to put some of it. Some of that, right? Uh, that that, uh, album on. But it was a. I, I had a different point yeah. of view. It's like when I was younger, my thing was to scare the hell out of anybody's parents. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I did. My goal was to get that 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 parental advisory, advisory sticker on my album. Yeah. You know, I, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, that that it was the shock and awe. Yeah. You know that that was part of what. <laughs> I wanted to do, right. you know, so I didn't you know, oh, the prince, I'm, I'm going to say such and such, yeah, you know what right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say that, <laughs> so yeah, that's a whole different outlook, I yeah. mean, but yeah, but I I can't sing like words of a version yeah. today, yeah. this is not me, you know, coming from me 50 some years old, like, right. what the hell are you doing talking about a version yeah. in the first place, yeah. Right, you know, it's, it's, it's starting to get creepy. It is creepy. Yeah. So, so yeah. So certain message you can't do anymore. Yeah. You well, know? That's, so. that's one of the costs is to think about. Yeah. Maybe the bigger. I mean, if you want to, again, the art is that that's personal, but it's also professional, and it can cost you on right. other on yeah. other levels. Right. Because you might. Singing sexy and seventeen when you're over fifty, yeah. you might look kind of weird doing it. Yeah, yeah. And especially to your your daughter and her friends. All right. Um, <laughs> and then finally, this is something we've talked about a little bit over the years with staying connected to the world, so you can continue to create. This one actually probably deserves an episode of its own. 
because uh, we always talk about people representing, you know, especially the rappers, representing the hood and all of that. Okay, so that's great when you first coming out of the hood. But when you are a person that's on top of the world, you live in an exclusive neighborhood. How much are you still representing the streets? Are you still singing about slinging? Yeah, what and, are, and while you and privately you are filling out private school applications for your kids, but you're busy singing about you know going to the strip club and and how hard it is in the hood. Like really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of what a lot of this stuff is kind of. I think it even comes with some of these social justice warriors. Oh, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, when you're living in a gated community yeah. and you're not living amongst, you know, the people who you're, you know, claiming that, and, and you're claiming that you got the same struggles yeah. that these people have. Right. It's like, come on. Right. So in some nah. ways, you you can't stay connected. And we even said that with, with Prince and Michael Jackson, like that, uh, that it, it, what is it, the thing where it takes 10 years to write your first album and not with them necessarily yeah. but just to have regular experiences like people like Sting go out and seem like they see the world and actually yeah. see the world yeah whereas we got kind of got the impression with some of the other stars that they were seeing the world via tours which means hotel to airplane to hotel yeah and then the only people that surrounded them are yes people and people trying to claw at them but I think that the thing that made Prince and Michael Jackson a little bit unique to me is that they always created their own world yeah. You know, and, okay. and, and, okay. and so and so I always felt like I was seeing the world through Prince's lens. <laughs> you know, or, or, or right, or or, or or Michael Jackson's lens, whatever yeah. it might be. I mean, okay. it might not be like necessarily rose colored, you know, because you could say like Sign of the Times, that song is is a is a dark song. Oh yeah. It is. But but these are people who and these are artists who are in this unique position of yeah. being like genres unto themselves. Yeah. As in, you yeah. know, it's like, it's, you know, I mean, they just do these type of songs that just sit by themselves. Yeah. And all the rest so of So they're stuff. a little different than the rappers who seem like they're trying to reflect the, a certain uh, yeah. ethos. Yeah, they, they're, they're trying to reflect, you know, reality as it is for, you know, in the hood right. and the streets and all this kind of stuff. And you keep trying to reflect that. You know, it's yes, like you can't you, do that anymore. And I'm not saying rappers can't, you know, get to that level where yeah. they start reflecting other things. I mean, you know, I I always felt like Outkast was a group of rappers who, to me, seemed yeah. like they were kind of making that transition yeah. and kind of taking it to another place where it, rap didn't always have to be that yeah. way. And yeah. it, it doesn't. It's like we've seen rappers yeah. who take more of a, you it's know, true, yeah. A, yeah, an artistic, holistic approach to how they kind of do yeah. stuff. I think Kanye West does that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he, he kind of reflects in his music where he's at. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you might not like it. You might feel like, oh, that, you know, he's crazy <laughs> or whatever else. But I think he does more to reflect that mm -hmm. and less to reflect that he's some kind of gangster who yeah. type of thing. So, so I think there are rappers out there who do kind of go other places with it, okay. you know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. don't just kind of relegate themselves mm -hmm. to be, you know, I always felt like Common was another type of rapper who, you know, again, didn't necessarily reflect that. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure like Kendrick Lamar, some of these other people are kind of going other places. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think Lil Wayne is too. I, you know, I, you know, Lil Wayne, again, he brings in the rock <laughs> stuff, he brings in all these other aspects to it, yeah. you know, and Drake too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these other things, you know, Drake is kind of like the emo rapper, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's always up in his feelings, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's <laughs> always a weird thing for rappers to do, but that's Drake. Right. You know? So some of these rappers, they, they, they do kind of, I think, push it a bit. So you know? they don't pay the cost. Right. It's for the other people who get stuck in the, this, yeah. I'm not going to move out of this because that's right. where... They, you look at Lil Wayne, see. and you can't tell me that Lil Wayne isn't somebody that's following his own drum. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I don't just see a lot of people walk around looking like this guy. Yeah, you know, and, and that just, I, you know, and then I do feel like he's following the beat of his own drum. Yeah, and he goes where he goes now, and his audience may go with him, they may not. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, I, I always think about that with Miley Cyrus. I mean, she was able to make. It was a push at first, but she yeah. was able to make the transition. And now, I mean, who, who did, did you can't even tell she was Hannah Montana yeah, before. So, so what do you guys think? Are the possible costs to being an artist worth it? 
we would love to hear your take on this topic because this to me is universal uh, from the time art was first being shared there was always the pros and cons of, of being quote unquote successful with it um, what else Ah, sugar fit. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Sugar fit. Got the Be sure. Swag and the CDs are CDs. limited edition. So once they're out, they're sold out, they're sold out. Yeah. So make sure you go to projipi.bandcamp.com. Right. And you can pick up your very own CD. Yeah. If you like vinyl, we even have a link below for a pre-order for vinyl through yeah. Patreon. And so. you can stream on all the streaming services. All the streaming Amazon, services. Amazon, Spotify, Apple, Apple, whatever else. And if you can't remember the thing that she just said, what was that? Vancamp, go to vancamp.com, type in P-R-E-J-I-P-P-I-E, and it will take you there. <laughs> yes. So, okay. <laughs> If you dig the vibe, be sure to subscribe. We're wishing you love, peace, and chicken grease.